I do a lot of videos about a section in my local newspaper called Mail Call, where people can call in and uh, or write in and leave anonymous brief comments about pretty much anything that they want. Um, but the Herald Mail also has a proper or a somewhat proper op-ed page, um, and I have a—I actually have it right here. This is from uh, the Sunday paper on November 27th. I bought this because. Uh, my wife needed something to line the floor with for an art project. And uh, the, the op-ed page, the letters to the editor, are interesting, and I wanted to share them with you for this particular paper. Um, first, there is an ed an, uh, a letter to the editor with uh, the headline, Salvation Comes Only Through Jesus Christ. To the editor... The rattling of sabers in the Middle East is not going to end, regardless of any negotiations between the various parties. Threats of violence from Iran and all of its leaders point to an eventual outcome, death and destruction. Muslims believe it was Ishmael whom Abraham was ready to sacrifice by order of Allah, but it was Isaac whom Abraham placed on the altar. Muslims believe that the Israelites never were God's chosen people. They believe Allah sent the prophet Muhammad to correct this lie created by Christians and Jews. Muslims say Ishmael and his Arab descendants were cheated out of their inheritance since he was Abraham's firstborn son. The Quran teaches that the people of the Bible falsified the original revelation and made themselves the heirs of God's covenant. To refute what the Muslims believe, Exodus 3.6 states, quote, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of the Bible, whose name is I Am, is not the God of Ishmael, Esau, Muhammad, and the Muslims. This issue is not just some irrelevant theological argument, but it is the basis of one of the central issues that troubles our world today. Millions of people of various religions and beliefs are sincere in what they believe. However, they are sincerely wrong. The Bible clearly states, you shall have no other gods before me. Many people believe getting to heaven and eternal life is like climbing a mountain, that there are numerous pathways, but all attain the same goal. Nothing is further from the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. Those seeking eternal life can only find it in confessing your sins to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, asking His forgiveness, turning your life around, and trusting in His saving grace. Ned C. Weirich, Hagerstown. Now, as you might be able to tell from, from that letter, uh, the level of discourse on the Herald Mail's editorial page is higher than it normally is in mail call, but only just. There are some things that uh, the writer of this letter says that I, that I agree with. For instance, uh, toward the end when he says, Millions of people of various religions and beliefs are sincere in what they believe. However, they are sincerely wrong. I agree with him. I think he's absolutely right on that. But I believe that he is a part of that wrong group. Um, I don't think that anyone who has a religious belief is right, no matter how sincerely they hold that belief. And I think it's telling that this guy, uh, I'll call him Ned, because that's his name, uh, that Ned offers, for, for his point of view, only quotes from the Bible as evidence. And that's m mostly, in my experience, what Christians do. That's all they really know how to do, because that's all that they are trained to do in church. Because church doesn't teach you anything useful about the Bible, or about your own Christian faith, or about other people's faiths. All it teaches you how to do is to quote the Bible. And quoting the Bible to an unbeliever or to a believer who is of a different stripe than you are is, is completely useless and completely meaningless and just a really silly thing to do. Also on the letter, to the, the letter to the editor page this day, right above the letter I just read, is another one that I think serves as, as a really interesting comment, a really useful comment on that Christian letter. Um, it's on a completely different subject but it um, displays a, a, an attitude and a way of approaching life that I don't think Ned, our Christian friend, really seems to possess. But I think it's a much more useful and a much more positive attitude about approaching life. And it's, it's a lesson that maybe Ned 
you could learn. And uh, this letter is headlined, People Should Be Tolerant at Family Events. And it says, to the editor, On Monday, my daughters and I attended the Christmas event at the Maryland Theater. The performances were fabulous, and we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. I was lucky enough that both of my daughters, ages 5 and 6, behaved themselves for the most part, but not all parents were as lucky. Throughout the show, there were some slightly unpleasant and perhaps annoying incidents. For example, kids screaming, adults talking loudly, and many clapping to a tune or song which made it impossible to enjoy the rendering. But I found it tolerable, especially since everything was supposed to be in the spirit of the holidays. There was a very unpleasant scene that, that unfolded in our vicinity at the end of the show that unfortunately dampened our enjoyment. There was a family nearby with several children, some of whom were very young, that were on occasion noisy and disruptive. When the show ended, an older couple shouted at the parents, quote, and you are very bad parents, unquote. I don't know what prompted this, but I think that it was uncalled for. It upset me, my daughters, who unfortunately overheard it, and I am sure it upset the whole family that it was aimed at. As a single mom of two young ones, I totally understand that sometimes kids misbehave and that not everyone has the same ideas as to what is the appropriate way to discipline a child. So I have learned tolerance, especially at family events such as this. Especially with the holidays coming, I think it befits us to remember and understand that not all of us come from the same situation or circumstances in life, nor do we come from the same upbringing and culture. I think that we could use a little more tolerance and charity and a little less judgment. I have two mottos that I try to follow. If you don't have anything nice to say to someone, don't say it, and concentrate on the good. Happy Holidays to all. Kostadinka Papaskov, Hagerstown. I don't agree with everything she says there. I, I personally don't really think that if you don't have anything nice to say to someone, don't say it is a very good motto. Um, I, I think it's important to be polite to people. I think it's important to be nice, but I, I don't think that you should never ever say a potentially unkind thing if it's something that needs to be said. But, but just look at the contrast of these two letters. The first letter that I read uh, is all about religious demarcation. It's incredibly partisan and tribalistic, and it's all about my religion is right, and those Muslims, their religion is wrong, and the only way that I know that I'm right and they're wrong is that my religion tells me I'm right. I mean, it's based on no evidence at all. It's, it's not a, a reasonable, rational position. It's, it's a guy who has found himself on a side and assumed that the side he is on is the right side and the sides that disagree with him are the wrong side. And then there's this letter from this single mother of two young children and she's advocating acceptance and tolerance and okay you went to the Maryland Theater and some of the kids were mouthing off but you know what get over it just accept it just instead of calling the parents of the noisy kids terrible parents. Maybe they were terrible parents. Maybe they weren't. Put yourself in their shoes. Imagine what it must be like to take care of those rowdy kids. Imagine what it must feel like to know that everyone in the theater is looking at you and looking at your disruptive children. Just put yourself, not necessarily to let those parents off the hook, not necessarily to say that they're good parents or that they, they are doing the best job that they can, but, but just to try and empathize with with them. It doesn't hurt to try to empathize with someone. It doesn't mean that you're taking their side. It doesn't mean that you're absolving them of any responsibility. It doesn't mean that you're arguing in their favor or that you're not irritated by what they're doing or their kids are doing. It just means that you can you can put yourself in their position and, and, and at least make an effort to understand them and to understand maybe why they do the things they do or or why their kids turned out the way they did or, or whatever it just and I just I love the attitude of Kostadinka here and I wish that more people had that attitude I mean I do think that the the position that Ned has here and the argument that he takes to present his position of just quoting from his holy book uh, is a stupid position because I just don't think it's ever going to accomplish anything um, but Ned's probably 
a nice guy. I, I don't know if he's a beer drinker. Maybe we could have a beer one day and, and, and get to know each other. And I would make an attempt to understand why he feels the way he does. And, and perhaps he would pay me the same courtesy. But, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It helps. And it helps us as individuals and it helps our society as a whole to try and understand each other before we jump to conclusions or before we write each other off as bad people or as incompetent parents or as being members of the wrong religion and I, I hope that especially since it's you know here in the United States it's the holidays we've got Christmas and New Year's coming up we're just off Thanksgiving everybody's in a much better mood it seems and we're, we're more open to the ideas of brotherhood and tolerance and charity and things like this and you know maybe we can we, we can make more of an effort to try and understand each other and to try and be more like the type of people Costa Dinka would want us to be and less like Ned.